Right, this is 8.4, and now we're going to keep talking about uh, how to graph rational functions. Uh, now, we have already done some of this stuff in the past, uh, but I'm going to do a couple of examples that are not like anything you've seen before. So, I'm just going to go to number two, right? And we're going to talk about how to, how to be able to tell a few things about the graph without actually having to use the calculator completely. Okay, so if we take a look at number two, for example, all right, there are certain things that I expect you for you to know without a calculator. I expect you to know how to find the vertical asymptotes. Okay, now if you remember, the vertical asymptotes are going to be located, or you can find them by setting the denominator, which is this one. equal to zero and then solving for that. So if I solve for that, in this case I'm going to have to solve by factoring, I would factor this into x plus one, x plus one. Okay, so factors will one that up to two. So after I set each factor equal to zero, and I solve, I get x is equal to negative one and x is equal to negative one. Okay, so I have basically the same number, right? So what that means for you is that I have a vertical asymptote at negative one, and I'm gonna put a dotted line right here that represents the line that my function cannot go through. It's gonna get really close to that asymptote, but it's never actually gonna touch it, and it's not gonna go through it, okay? Now the other thing that I expect you to remember is the horizontal asymptotes, all right? And we have all those rules that you can probably look up um, it has to do with the degree of the function, if you remember. So, to look for horizontal asymptotes, look at the degree of the function up here. Now, the degree is 2, because remember, that's the power here, right? The biggest power is 2. And the degree of the bottom is also 2. When the degree of the top and the bottom are equal, then we would do Betsy. Remember, Betsy is just an acronym that lets you know bottom equals top coefficients. So, I'm looking at the ratio of the coefficients. In this case, the ratio of the coefficients, that would be a coefficient of 1. This would be a coefficient of 1. I'm going to put it as a ratio, meaning I'm going to divide them by one another, which in this case is 1. All right, so I have a horizontal asymptote at 1, which is right here. Okay, so I'm going to put a horizontal asymptote. And then I'm going to show you why this is a little bit different than normal. Now, to find the zeros, okay, so again, this should be reviewed for you. To find the zeros you would set the numerator remember this is a numerator equal to zero and then solve for them. In this case you would have x minus one, x minus one so that means that my zeros would be located at one I have two of them but they're the same number so that's one more thing I know. Okay, so what that means is that I'm going to cross through 1. And then finally, if you wanted to know the y-intercepts, or the y-intercepts are going to be when you plug 0 for every x. So look at this equation. If I plug in a 0 here, here, and here, and here, I would end up with 1 over 1. So in this case, my y-intercepts are going to be located at uh, 0, 1, okay? So therefore, I have another one right there. So I'm going to give my calculator real quick so you can see this. So really, at that point, because otherwise, you're going to have to make up your own table, and it would take quite a bit for you to be able to tell what's going on. So at this point, you can use a calculator, but that's, this is definitely stuff that I need you to be able to find without it. Okay? So I'm going to graph it. All right? This is what it looks like. Uh, oops, I have another one on. My apologies. I have to turn this last equation off. So, all right. Looks like I have this equation on, so I'm going to turn that off again. So let me show it to you again. All right, so this is what it looks like. All right, there's my vertical asymptote. All right, so this is what's strange about it. Okay, what's strange about it is that 
On this side, you know, it, it kind of looks like what you expect. It sort of goes up like this. Now, on this side, you actually go through the horizontal asymptote. And then it picks up. It actually gets closer and closer and closer to that asymptote as you go farther to the right. To prove my point, right, if I make this uh, x max 100, you can sort of tell that as it goes to the right, it sort of flattens out, which means that it's, it's really, really, really close to the asymptote. Okay, so the whole reason why I did this problem is for you to notice that sometimes your function can go through the horizontal asymptote. Really, the horizontal asymptote is what happens, what's going to happen to this function as you get farther to the left and farther to the right, well, what ends up happening to it is it's going to get really, really close to this y is equal to 1, which is a horizontal asymptote. So essentially, that's going to give you what happened, what's the end behavior of it. That's really what's going on on that one. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the second page. And we do, we do have a couple of things. I'm going to place this up there, even though I know for some of you this is just gibberish. Uh, oblique asymptotes, which I normally call slanted asymptotes, are the same. Essentially, what that says is that if the degree of the top is one degree higher than the bottom, then you're going to have some slanted asymptotes. And I give an example of that. And then, point of this continuity, that's, that's normally what I call a hole. So when you hear me say hole, that's that's what I'm talking about, all right? So. Uh, check out that example if you can understand it, but if not, let's just go ahead and move on to these, okay? Now, on this one, all right, we're going to go through the same steps, but I'm going to go through them a little faster. Remember, I want to know what my vertical asymptotes are, so I'm going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So my vertical asymptotes are at negative three. So negative three would be right here. Okay, so that's my vertical asymptote. Uh, horizontal asymptote, notice that the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, so in this case is bow 2. Bigger on top, bigger on top, it's undefined. So the horizontal asymptote is undefined, right? So if it's undefined, then we need to find out if this has a slanted or oblique asymptote. And this is how we do it. Look at the degree of the top. The degree of the top is 2, and the degree of the bottom is 1. Okay, so again, because the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom, they're just one degree apart, okay, uh, and the top is bigger. Let me write it so maybe you can understand it. If this is degree 2 and this is degree 1, if there's just a difference of one, right? This is one, this is two. Then if you subtract this, essentially if you have two minus one, you get one. So if you get that, and that, by the way, this means implies, not equal. If that happens, then you have a slanted asymptote. Or in this case, let's just call it oblique. And we're not going to talk about how to find it. We're going to leave that for your pre-cal teacher. But essentially all you do is just use long division. And it will give you some equation that gives you the slanted asymptote. Moving on. So now uh, we can talk about zeros. Zeros of the function would be if you factor this set it equal to zero and factor. You get x plus four, x plus one. So you get x is equal to negative four, x is equal to negative one. So you have one point right here. Let's see, three, four is right there. So you have two points right there. And remember, to find the y-intercept, even though that's not that useful, you would put a 0 here, here, and here, and you would end up with 4 thirds. So it would be like somewhere up here if you want to look at it that way. All right, at that point, you can plug it in your calculator. In your calculator, you can really tell, and I'm not going to do it, so just for the sake of time, this is what it looks like. You can really tell there is no horizontal asymptote, and it's sort of 
if, if I were to draw a line right here, you can sort of see that this two lines would kind of get closer. As you go to the right and to the left, it kind of gets closer to the slanted asymptote, okay? But we're just going to leave it at that. Now, the next one is, is very useful, especially for calculus. Um, we're going to do all the same steps, but before we do that, all right, we're going to factor. So from now on, you might want to try to factor first before you start doing all those steps. And then notice that this right here, x minus 3, will cancel that, okay? If you graph this function, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and graph it. And this, this one's going to be really tough to graph. And I'm joking about that part, by the way. So if you graph this, right, it looks like a just a line because when you cancel everything, you end up with x plus 2. All right, so when you end up with x plus 2, that means that this function right here and that function are going to look nearly identical. Okay, nearly identical, except for you're going to have a hole, or what they call a point of discontinuity, right here. All right, now I'm going to tell you how to find that now. The, there is no, like after you cancel this, there is no vertical asymptotes, there is none. All right, if we're talking about horizontal asymptotes, same idea, I only have this, so this is not even irrational anymore, so I don't have any horizontal asymptotes. Um, you can find the zeros if you wanted to. I mean, the zeros, you know, you would just set this equal to zero, which in this case is negative two. Right, and notice that that's that point that I had right there. And then uh, to find that point of discontinuity, the stuff that you cancel, right? So we're going to call it the point of discontinuity, or we can call this a hole, whatever you want to call it. I normally just call it a hole, so if you want to do the same, great. All right, all you're going to do is just set the, the stuff that you cancel out, just one of them, set that equal to zero, and you get x is equal to three. So at x is equal to 3, notice that if I put in a 3 here, that's that point right there. Or you can just put that 3 back into this. See, 3 plus 2 is 5. So this is point uh, 3 comma 5. Essentially, that's where my hole is going to be. And I'm not even going to put that. But the point is that if you look at the graph, on the calculator, it looks completely flat. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all between this equation and that equation. But when you look at the table, and you should be able to tell that there is a point of discontinuity. Let me see if I have that graphed already. I do. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. This is what that looks like if you graph on your calculator. Now let me move the calculator over here so you don't get the glare. Okay, and if you go to second table, notice that when I go to three, all right, where the hole is, Y says error. But if you look at the graph, you can't really see a hole. So I'm just saying, be careful with that. All right, moving on. So let's see if the next one is even interesting at all. Okay, so this one does have a couple of things going on, right? If I factor this, I get X minus four get x minus 4, x minus 2, over this right here would be x minus 2, x plus 1. All right, so I'm going to cancel this. Okay, so I'm going to go real quick through all of it. Horizontal asymptotes, remember I'm going, excuse me, vertical asymptotes. Let's start off with that first. Vertical asymptotes, I'm going to set my denominator, my simplified denominator, equal to 0. So I get x is equal to negative 1. Horizontal asymptotes, all right? Again, I'm going to go off the same thing. So I'm going to go off of this. The degree of the top and the bottom is the same. So I have Betsy, bottom equals top. So this is the ratio of the coefficients. The coefficient of this x is 1. The coefficient of that x is 1. So I have 1 over 1, which is 1. All right, so my vertical asymptote, negative 1. My horizontal asymptote. There is my horizontal asymptote, okay? 
And then I finally, I'm going to try to see if there's, uh, well, not finally, I have a couple of things. Uh, zeros. Excuse me. I'm going to set this right here equal to zero. And I get x is equal to four. So one, two, three, four, man. Barely on the graph. And then finally, there is a hole. And I know because I got canceled out. So what I canceled out here was an x minus two. So for holes, or the hole, I should say, I set this equal to zero and solve. And I get x is equal to two. Okay, so I have a hole at 2. Okay, so if I graph this, and this is not going to be perfect, so let me just actually use my calculator on this. Uh, let's see, x squared minus 6x plus 8. So that's what that looks like right now. Okay, so notice there are two things going on. Uh, negative one is an error because that's where my vertical asymptote is located. So let me put the graph back up here. So again, it can't be negative one, x cannot be equal to negative one because I have a vertical asymptote. But notice that where the hole is, even though I can't see anything going on here, so there's nothing going on here at x is equal to two that I can see. But it turns out that there is a uh, there is There is something going on at x is equal to 2. There is a hole right there, but it won't show up on the graph on the calculator, but I know there is one because I solved for it. All right, and you can also see it on the calculator. 2, error, that's the hole. Okay.